Okay, this is part two of our series on how to uh, basically derive reaction rate functions and graphs. So in the first video I talked about how to derive the zeroth order. and We took a very basic differential equation here. This is an ordinary differential equation. We separated, we integrated. I took my boundaries from A initial to A, from zero to T. We solved. We got a function uh, of A as a, as a function of T. It was a linear function uh, that was basically decaying like that. The whole point of this, these, these particular uh, graphs is that we want to, ex we basically want to express each of these uh, reaction rate orders as a linear function. So each of these is going to have their own signature graph that they uh, display linear behavior as. Okay, so that'll make sense as we go down here. So this video might be a little bit longer because I'm going to go ahead now and talk about the first order and the second order. So I'm going to go ahead to the color red now. And uh, we just did the zeroth order, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to talk about the first order now. Let's talk about the first order. And again, this is, uh, you know, these derivations are basically going to be in terms of, uh, you know, the, the differential applications of these uh, rate reactions. Uh, it's kind of rare that we would see an actual calculus application in, chem in chemistry. And not that there aren't differential applications throughout fields of chemistry, but I'm just saying in a basic chemistry course, you don't see differential equations too often. Uh, you know, not, nothing like you would see in physics or, uh, you know, or, or something, you know, or a higher level uh, math course. Chemistry tends to basically be, you know, basic, basic algebra. But in this case, we are going to be using some di differential equations in these rate reactions. So the first order equation basically says that the rate of the reaction is K times the concentration of A uh, to the first power. Okay, and so that's going to change things just a little bit because when I take the rate, I'm going to basically say the change of A with respect to the change of T is going to equal K A to the first power, just K A. This is going to change things because I still have to go ahead when, when I'm dealing with my differential equation here, I still have to separate and integrate. So I'm basically going to have uh, DA here and I'm going to have to go ahead and divide by A and I'm going to move T up here. So I'm going to have DA over A equals k dt. And again, this is negative here because we're decaying, right? We're losing that, that rate here. It's not really going to change too much. So before we had a very simple application here when we had the zeroth order, we just integrated dA and dt, and we were basically done. Uh, dA becomes A and dt becomes T. And we evaluated those uh, across those, those endpoints. But this one's a little bit different. Uh, when we go ahead and integrate this now, I'm going to go ahead and integrate this, integrate this. I mean, it, again, that constant comes out there, so we don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to go from AO to A, A initial to A final, and I'm going to go from 0 to T. And basically, when we integrate uh, the integral of 1 over A, we're actually going to get a natural log here. So we're going to get a natural log of A evaluated from, um, again, from from this AO to A, and then uh, I'm going to get negative K, and this T is still just going to be evaluated from 0 to T. That's not going to change too much. And again, this negative here means that we are losing, uh, we're basically decaying, we're losing, you know, we're, lo we're losing uh, the, the reactants. That's basically all that that means. It's nothing too mysterious and then those reactants are going to become products right they're, they're just they're reacting they're disappearing they're going to become something else so this is basically going to become the natural log of a minus the natural log of ao is going to equal uh, negative k t and again minus zero i'll go ahead and write that in but basically it's negative k t right there so if I went ahead and solve for the natural log of A equals negative KT plus the natural log of A initial, 
this is going to be our basic equation here. This is going to be our governing equation for a first order reaction, okay? First order. So you might say to yourself, well, who really cares? Um, how does that affect me? Well, it is, it's important to understand this because uh, this particular function here for the first order reaction is the natural log of A equals negative kt plus natural log of, a, of AL. So let's take a look at that for a second. If I want to transform this equation, I want to use a different color here. Uh, sometimes when we transform equation, okay, I'm going to talk about transforming an equation. Obviously this is not a linear function, but what I could do is I could basically take this natural log and I could substitute that. Let's say that I said y equals the natural log of a and negative kt plus the natural log of a o. Okay, let's just pretend like I did that for a second. Now all of a sudden, what do I have if I took a look at this? Now all of a sudden I have a linear function, right? If I took it as a function of y equals that, right? And again, this would be my dependent variable. And this would be my independent variable here. Right? Time is the independent always. And the natural log of A initial, that's just some constant. That's nothing that's too crazy. That's just it's just a constant, right? It's just we we evaluate the natural log of the initial concentration. So now I'm basically taking this um equation of the natural log of A and I'm transforming it transforming this equation into this. I'm going to say y equals negative kt plus the natural log of A initial. So I've basically transformed this equation, this natural log equation, into a linear function. Okay. So if I went ahead and plotted this, if I plotted, instead of plotting y on this axis, if I just plotted the natural log of A, in other words, I didn't solve, I didn't solve for A, I didn't solve it as an, an exponential e raised to this power. I basically just, I'm going to transform that. I'm going to say here on this axis, I'm going to have the natural log of A, which is going to be like the Y, right? And on this axis, I'm just going to have the T. This is basically just going to be a linear function again. And so why should we care about that? Why should you care about a linear a natural log of A versus T? Because again, we're talking here about signatures. Okay, what does that mean? Signatures. Signature. That when you have the natural log graph versus A, that this is a signature of the first order. And so you need to be able to recognize that. So when you have a linear function that's decaying, and I started here, remember my intercept now, if I go down here, my intercept is basically going to be the natural log times A initial. So at t equals zero here, sorry, let me level that out here. At t equals zero here, uh, this is basically going to be, at this particular point, this is the natural log of A initial, and then it's going to decay all the way down until I get to zero. So when you see the natural log versus A and you see a linear function, this is a signature of the first order. If we see A versus T, okay, this one, if you're talking about the zero order, this is a signature, right, signature of the zero order, okay. Why do we care about this? Well, I want you to understand if you're looking at a graph, if you know you have a linear function of a versus t, that's a zeroth function or zeroth order. If you're looking at a linear function decaying as a function of the natural log versus time, that's a signature of the first order. Okay. And so now let's talk about the second order. The second order is going to be uh, just another equation. We're going to derive that. And I'm going to basically do my second order in the color purple here. All right, so now we're going to talk about second order kinetics, right? And again, I'm going to derive the equation and I'm going to derive the graph. I'm going to show you how this works. So again, we're going to start out with my basic application here, my basic differential, dA versus dt is going to equal negative k 
Only this time I'm going to have a second order. I'm going to have a squared here. Okay. So now it's a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and do my same exact thing. I'm going to separate and integrate. So I'm going to have dA over concentration of a squared. And that's going to equal negative k times dt. And again, I'm just separating here, separating here. This separating these two variables here, right? Separate. Whoops, that looks like an r. Didn't want that. separate and integrate, right? I mean this is really basic stuff. This is like calculus one. I don't even, th I'm not even going to really call this differential equations just because this is so basic. Um, this is first order basic application. Nothing crazy going on here. And again this is, a, this is pretty, pretty rare that we will see applications of calculus in just basic chemistry courses. I mean it's there in higher level chemistry but like in a basic chemistry course you're not going to see it too much. So let's go ahead and, and take care of this. So we're going to go ahead and integrate this. So I'm going to integrate this. So dA over A squared. I'm just going to go ahead and remove those brackets. Equals negative K dT. Same exact process here. I'm going to go from A initial to A final. And I'm going to go from 0 to t here. Okay, so now I have basically, this is a to the negative 2. So basically when I'm basically dealing with that, remember when we integrate something, we add 1 and we divide by that power. So it's a to the negative 1 over negative 1. Excuse me, let me just erase that bracket there. A to the negative 1 over negative 1 because this was A to the negative 2. You add 1 and divide by t divide by the power. And this is evaluated from A initial to A final. And then this one is just the same as it was before. There's nothing really too special about this. It's negative K uh, T evaluated from 0 to T. Okay. So this guy is going to be right here. This is A to the negative 1. So this is going to be uh, 1 over A negative minus 1 over negative AO here equals negative K T minus 0. Okay? So again, this these two negatives become a positive. So I could basically, um, I could swap the all of this stuff around. I can bring the 1 over A over here, the K over T here. So when I do all of that, I'm basically going to get 1 over A equals negative KT plus 1 over A initial, like this. All right, when we bring this over, this KT actually becomes positive. And just to, just to clarify here real quick, I move this. Remember that I'm, I'm making 1 over A is going to come over here. This guy becomes positive, and this, this comes over here, and this becomes positive over here. So. Um, anyway, that's the idea here. So that's that's why I end up with this. This is now going to be my governing equation for the second order uh, kinetic equation. So second order, boy, this board is not writing too well right now. Second order, okay. If you can read that, let me see if I can erase that. Sorry about that. I don't know what's what's up with this board right now. Second order. Okay. So again, we're going to apply the same concepts that we did before. Okay. Remember, this 1 over A, I'm going to basically express that as Y, right? Y equals KT plus 1 over AO. Okay. And I'm going to transform that equation again. I'm going to transform it. Why do we do that? Well, it's a, it, this is a very convenient method. Again, it helped us with the first order. We were able to transform this, right? We transformed this equation to a linear equation, and we did natural log versus time. Now, this one we're going to transform a, a little bit different because we're going to do 1 over a versus time, right? So now when we talked about our variables here, again, this is going to be the dependent 
and again this is going to be the independent okay and again this is just some constant so the idea is that we're taking a complicated equation and we're just we're just we're basically simplifying it down to a line right and you know that what is 1 over a well it's some it's some inverse function it's it's it's, a, it's 1 over the concentration what does that really mean well let's just transform that into a linear equation that we can understand so that's going to help us quite a bit here so before we talked about signatures of the zero order and the first order let's just review those for a second when you have a versus t and it's a linear function decreasing that's a signature of the zeroth order when you have the natural log of a versus t we transform that right remember we said y equals that right and you have a decreasing linear function that's a signature of the first order but now let's talk about what's a signature of the second order what's a signature of the second order Boy, this does not want to write today. Signature of the second order. What's that going to look like? Well, let's take a look here. Well, it's going to be a linear function, right? But now I'm plotting 1 over a versus t, right? So now I'm going to plot here 1 over a versus t. Now what does that look like? Well before I had negative slopes into here, right? Before when I plotted that that first order there was definitely a negative slope into there, right? So it was decreasing and this one there was definitely a negative slope into there and it was decreasing. But all of these have their own signature. So this was a versus t. The first order is going to be the natural log versus t and now my second order is going to be 1 over a versus t. But what's the difference here? Now I have a positive slope here. It's a little bit different. And I'm, I'm obviously going to have some type of an intercept here. I'm still going to start here at some, some constant, right? I'm still going to start at 1 over a initial. But now I have a positive slope. So the signature of the second order equation is going to be a positive slope starting with an intercept of 1 over ao. So it's going to look like that, OK? So again, this is where, where all of these graphs come from. And I've gone through step by step deriving each of these, you know, again, starting from that zeroth order and the signature of the linear function of a versus t declining. The first order, it was just a function of natural log of a versus t declining. And now we get to the second order where we actually have 1 over a versus t, and it's going to be increasing starting with that uh, intercept uh, right there of 1 over a initial. So hopefully this helps you clear up the idea of kinetics. Uh, where, do the, where do the functions come from? And now what do the graphs look like? So hopefully you can understand, you can basically understand what each of these equations mean. Okay, You can find a as a function of t. And now you can basically understand when you're looking at these graphs, you can quickly identify if it's zero, first, or second order equation. All right, that's all I got for you tonight. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.